coming to you from the middle of our rainbow universe. It's the Queer Centric with your rainbow warrior himself, Queerly Johnny. Hello, hello, everybody. It is another episode of the Queer Centric with your favorite queerdo, Johnny, and I'm happy to be here. It's going to be a good show as always, uh, but we got to wrap up some business at the beginning. Remember, uh, we've been sharing some of the photos we did at last year's holiday photo shoot uh, in just after this episode comes out, like three days, y'all can see. We will start the 12 days of Christmas that lasts all December. And so we would have already shot our photo shoot. You know, it's the naughty and nice. It's gonna be a lot of fun this year. I'm excited to hear what you people out there think. Uh, everybody was so excited uh, and we're very grateful for that. So please watch for uh, the new photo shoot, The 12 Days of Christmas, uh, coming to you on the 1st of December is the first one. So please watch for that. And remember, we're also shooting a new video uh, for everyone. We're doing our cover of Tom Goss, Enemy of Good. And so it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be like you like. We like to get all sassy and funny and, and have guys in their underwear. It's just a fun a fun shoot. Uh, so that's coming next, and then we have a lot of projects on the books for next year, so keep watching. Uh, any suggestions, send them our way. We we don't tend to, to say no to much, which is kind of my dating philosophy as well, so keep that in mind. Uh, but let's move forward, talk to the guest of the hour, which I'm very excited to finally get on his schedule. John Hernandez is an actor, a writer, and a comedian, as well as the editor-in-chief of Bear World Magazine. And if you don't know the magazine, don't worry, by the end of the show you will. Uh, I have a long history with them and they've been nothing but amazing and I love it. Uh, so where does John find the time to do these 8,000 things? Well, we're gonna find out as we're very happy to welcome John Hernandez to the Core Centric. Welcome, how are you? Hi, thank you for having me, I'm great. How are you? I am amazing. I love watching your, cause you are out there doing a million things like like I try to do here. So getting to know you is fun because I already know the personality at least that, that goes out into the public. So this is gonna be fun. I don't know how you're not tired right now. Like you do I a am. million things. <laughs> I, I'm exhausted right now, <laughs> but thank you for saying so. <laughs> well, you do, see the energy is still there because you're coming to us. We are, everybody knows in the Pacific Northwest, you're way across over in New York. So yep. time difference and you're busting your ass all the time and you're running a magazine. So yeah. I want to start by, I do this podcast. I also do another show, uh, Bears of a Certain Age. And I, in this era of my life, as the drag queens would say, uh, I am celebrating the body I am in and the bears. So how long do you think you've identified? Were you always, uh, did you always identify as a bear? How did that come into your life? You know, it, that's actually an interesting story. Uh, you know, when I first came out, um, I started, you know, hooking up when I was 18 years old. And right. this this might be dating me. That That's going back to 1999. Wow. But, um, yeah, the 90s, huh? <laughs> You're such a young fuck. I love it. <laughs> well, debatable. But <laughs> I... <laughs> I very much remember the first guy I ever hooked up with. His name was Barry, and we met on web TV. Like, to further date myself. Do you remember web TV? I totally remember web TV. <laughs> oh, my so, God. So, <laughs> we met in some random chat room, and, you know, um, yeah, I was very hyper aware that I didn't look like other gay guys um, at 18 years old. It was uh, Chorus Folk was out, the, oh, uh, cool. the American version. Yeah. And I remember loving it, but hating it because I was like, I don't look like that. Where am I going to find my place in this community? Yeah. And, you know, so people like say representation matters, but it really, really does because I was so insecure. So I kind of took what I could get because I didn't think I could get much back then. So anyway, <laughs> I hooked up with this guy who was way, way older than me and, um, you know, we fooled around and the first thing he said, like after, you know, after he came, he, he was yeah. done. Um, and the pillow talk was, um, the first thing he said, he was like, I don't have AIDS, but you shouldn't believe me. Uh, so he was just trying to like teach me a lesson, like as a young kind of like, whatever, I guess I was being what? promiscuous. And yeah. that's literally the first thing he said, uh, you know, post-orgasm. And the second thing he said, he was like, 
but you know, he was like, uh, if you're getting started, you know, in your dating career, whatever, the bears would love you. So like, it was, it was kind of like, a a tickle and a slap. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like it was jarring to have somebody say that immediately after my first sexual encounter. But then he kind of followed it up with like, he was like, you know, he was like, you should go down to the dugout. That was the big bear bar in New York city back then. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I did my research after that encounter, never saw him again, needless to say. Yeah, no, thank you. But he pointed me in the right direction, you know, so from there on, I kind of discovered the bears, discovered where my body type would be appreciated. So I never really had to go through a lot of the bullshit that a lot yeah. of young 20 something gays go through. Not that it was a perfect right. world or anything like that, but I did find the bears from 18 years old on. Had so. you had that ever uh, come into your your mental world, this this idea of bears, that they're being this specific type? No, you know, I, I really didn't because uh, I know the information was out there. But again, I was on web TV. So right. I, like my my access to information was very limited at the time. So, you know, gratefully, he kind of gave me that bit of info. So I knew where to search. And, you know, I found the dugout and I found my tribe. So I was lucky in that way. Which changes everything when you I, I found it. So when I was uh, I was 20, I think. and But I was a large 325 pound man. And I didn't know, I was a preacher's kid. I had no idea. But, you know, right then I started in the Chub Chaser community and found acceptance. And then I lost 100 pounds and the Chub Chaser community was like, you need to go to the Bears, they'll like you better. But we are really good at, as gay people at really labeling, but it has been so honestly helpful. I watch, uh, I surround myself with as many bears and body positive people and all that. And what I love seeing is when you're surrounded by your people, I don't think it crosses my mind that I'm not sexy and I'm not, you know, because I'm not with the, the queerest folk people. Love the show. Right. You're right. I didn't see me on there at all. No, not at all. I, you know, it was pretty devastating and, you know, kind of related, um, you know, there's a lot of conversations about <clears throat> uh, about when they put out flyers for club nights and stuff. If you don't see someone that looks like you, you don't go and you don't feel welcome. Yeah. And, you know, especially in New York with all the clubs back then, it was, I think it was Avalon. It was uh, yeah. Crash. It was all these places. I never saw a heavier guy, a hairy guy or anything like that. So I, I avoided those places. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's, you know... I stayed with the bears and, you know, I, I was also fresh meat back then, you know, that, that also is an added bonus. So, um, you know, and they, they made me feel beautiful and, yeah. you know, I got hooked. <laughs> and we, we all deserve that. It's why I like celebrating, why I like celebrating all people, but I enjoy celebrating the bears because they've always embraced me among other things. And it, it's been a beautiful thing. Now, did you, obviously, uh, you've been out there, you, you, knew your tribe early on did you ever foresee where you would be in life and as like what do they call it now you're like a bear liberty you know what i mean uh, well thank, <laughs> thank you that's very generous but um no i you know um you know even when i found the bears um you know i would feel comfortable but never fully in my skin that is really something that comes with age i mean just to give some context to that, like, I only, I would say maybe in the last five years started taking my shirt off in public, even at bear events, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, um, I would always go with tank tops and that's why I figured I would rock it tonight yes. just to, you know, Love it. the body hair, you know, w yeah. whatever. But, um, so yeah, I, I never quite imagined that my journey would take me to being the editor of the, the only bear lifestyle yeah. magazine in the world and uh that's incredible and it's mind-boggling but uh it, you know it's been its own journey i've been working with uh bear world magazine for the last uh eight eight maybe nine years and yeah uh, I, I guess kind of worked my way up but right. <laughs> you know uh you know i mean in truth my you know my husband richard jones is the founder yeah. and we we had met years ago and then uh, we met because I started writing for the magazine, and as we developed um, 
you know, I guess a work relationship. We developed a romantic relationship and we lived together. Where's yeah, that and, Hallmark movie? That's what I want to know. I know, right? Um, so it's like, yes, there's a bit of nepotism, of course, but uh, I feel like I earned my way. Um, and I was going to say, it would position. be different if uh, you weren't good at what you do. You know what I mean? If someone's got a that. job and they don't put, but you do. You, and this is what I love because, of course, I have adored Richard for years. I was lucky to work from weight. After I uh, lost the weight, I wrote an article and Bear World was the, the place that was willing to put it up. So that was 11 years ago, I think. It was a while back. But what I love, because that's a brilliant mind, Robin, brilliant mind, doing this. And now it seems like evolution, really. There is a little, there's a different kind of leadership under you, a different. And I love that because you both were amazing. But you're now it's your turn to kind of lead this into a future, right? Yeah, that's what they actually wanted of me because, you know, I would always pitch different ideas and I covered different aspects. Like, I covered my interests and wrote for Bear World, but I also... Bear World is uh, a sister magazine, too. We There's Queer40.com, yes. travel, uh, GamingMag.com. So I would write for each of the publications. Yeah. Um, but, of course, being a bear and my experiences there and just kind of, um, I don't know... Uh, my editor at uh, Queer 40 was uh, Marin Johns, who's a very esteemed, established uh, journalist, and she yes. used to be the editor-in-chief for Curve magazine, and she always said I had great instincts, and she would tell Richard that, too, because when they started looking for an editor, he asked her, and she was like, well, why don't you make John the editor? He, he you know, he kind of has an instinct for that, so... You know, I pitched my ideas and, you know, Bear World was always trying to um, elevate and, and give voice to, you know, bears that are silenced or unheard of around the world. You know, Richard's always had it a priority of the magazine to elevate uh, bears of color, um, to have those tough conversations because the bear community, you know, is also heavily criticized and rightfully so for being sometimes toxically masculine and okay. um not well not welcoming to like um non-binary transgender drag queens right. and you know and um so we've always tried to give voices to people that represent that part of the community and welcome them in so i continued that work and i i've taken on some uh, freelance writers that can write from that perspective so um i'm working with uh master j De tobias perry who is uh uh in the the leather scene um nice uh black leather master who'll be writing for us and we'll be having the president of the black bear brotherhood damon um percy coming on board as well to kind of give voice to to the black bear community and uh i've kind of reached out and i've been talking with bears in asia in, in japan the philippines uh i've started a relationship with the bears in poland and the bears in wow. uh Prague and so just kind of different areas that Bear World never really was able to reach into because you know Richard was stretched very thin and, Bear, and yeah. la you know the last editor was only a part time editor so yeah uh, my contribution is to kind of make it more international I've also flooded it with a lot more sex yeah. because I don't you know, love the sassy. <laughs> that sassy you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a very hypersexualized subculture and we should yeah. talk about that and celebrate yeah. that. And uh, we've been doing a lot of medical stuff. Um, there's a doctor yeah. down in Australia, Dr. George Forgan Smith, who's been wonderful with me and giving me so much free medical advice for, you know, queer men uh, yeah. and queer trans men too. So, you know, that that's kind of where I'm making my mark and my change in the evolution of the magazine. See, and I think that's amazing because we start with this amazing base. And you're not kidding. I can't imagine because you're doing all this work that you wouldn't be stretched thin at times as well. But you're taking already what was amazing and then you're building on it, which is what we should do. And I love that. Now, is it difficult at all? Are there moments between Richard and you that, you know, he might have a different opinion on, but, you know, now you're the editor-in-chief, you know? Yeah, you know, he certainly... Um... He'll tell me when there's something that he'd like to cover, but in general, I have complete editorial freedom. So no. whatever I feel should be covered is yeah. perfectly fine. And it's just, the, the I would say the most stressful thing is trying to uh, 
get out there and get to everybody, you know, yeah. um, yeah. you don't ever want people to feel overlooked or ignored, but, um, okay. and I also want the stories to be authentic. So it's a lot of interviews. It's a lot of, from people's own perspective and, um, yeah. you know, and, uh, I think it's going good so far. Another thing that they've really responded to is they've been featuring a lot of artists in the community, whether yeah. whether painters, drawers, comic artists, uh, musicians, and uh, the Bears seem to respond to that. But of course, you know, they, they love the pictures of the, the shirtless guys. At the oh, yeah. You do a really too. good mix. <laughs> like, you know, come for the super hot guys and stay for the meat. You know what I mean? Right, like, right, right. Uh, and... <laughs> Richard is so good because he still lets me bother him now and then. But now, you you two in my eyes are the power couple that I long to be. So oh. I, I think that's amazing. Something else you have done. Wasn't this the first year that you guys had an awards uh, yes. situation? T can you tell me, first of all, why and then what was it like? Yeah. Um, so we're... Bear World Magazine uh, is 11 years old now, but uh, over the whole last entire year, we've been celebrating 10 years of Bear World Magazine, and Richard and Robin wanted to really mark that um, and really put, like, you know, a flag in the sand. So they were like, let's let's do an award show to honor members of the bear community. So yeah. uh, that's what we did. Um, you know, it's it's streaming now on our YouTube channel, um, but you can also go to bearworldmag.com, and there's a... there's an article recap of all the winners, but, you know, um, we honored, uh, you know, best bear retailers, best bear club night, bar nights, uh, best bear, bear events, um, best bear adult entertainers, just to shine a little bit of light. And, and Richard designed, um, or co-designed a special award that'll be coming from, uh, the Finnish artist, uh, who's also a bear, Santiago Delgado, who does these amazing kind of animal sculptures, uh, he designed the award that's going to go out to all the recipients. So um, wow, yeah, and it was a lot of fun. We 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 recorded it here in New York. Uh, we did it on a green screen. Uh, Kimmy Moore, who's a local drag queen here, was my co-hostess with the mostess, <laughs> and uh, we had a lot of fun with it. Uh, but next year, uh, we've already made arrangements with the Crown and Anchor in Provincetown to host the awards live during P-Town Bear Week, so... That will yeah. be huge. That will be amazing. Now, how do the awards work? Were there uh, categories and, like, people are nominated and then pick the winner, or how did that go down? So, um, for this first award ceremony, basically, uh, you know, Richard and Robin kind of, based on their legacy of running the magazine yeah. for the last 10 years, they put up the nominees for this this awards. Um, I believe the way we're going to do it now, you know, to honor the legacy and everybody they've worked with and featured in the past, not that they're not going to come forward with us, but you know, right. Um, for this awards, um, I believe we're going to seek the opinion of the readership and, you know, take that on board and kind of have a powwow together and just come up with a list of six nominees for each category. I think we're going to expand the categories a little bit and then just like this year we'll, after the nominees are up we let the readership vote so it's not us that's awarding right. it it's it's the bear world readers that are awarding the people the awards so. and that's so fun so i do believe uh well i think a, a few of the people i've i've been lucky enough to interview have were nominated i think did you guys nominate benjamin cole right we did we did first of all the sweetest man i've ever met in my whole entire life and I was like, and he's so humble. And I love that there, if you're in the bear community at all, there are people that we know, maybe we listen to their music, maybe we've seen them on things. And I think that's exciting. And uh, for next year, tell my producer how, what category he can throw me into. I'll do anything. <laughs> we have bear personality and uh, so i think that that would be perfect for, for you so, i love it you was, did you enjoy doing that you know hosting is a whole other world than all of the other stuff we do how was that for you i actually i like hosting because um you know for fun for shits and giggles i do horror hosting yeah uh, my my character stan the mechanic um <laughs> and so you know, I, I look back at the early uh, videos when I, you know, I started that during the pandemic as a way to, like, keep myself busy and not drive myself right. crazy. And, um, you know, it, it's kind of uh, cringy looking back now, but it helped me. We all got to start somewhere. So, um, exactly. you know, 
<laughs> I'm happier with my hosting capabilities, and I have uh, Stan to thank in large part for that. That's so amazing. Uh, well, that was on Stan the Mechanic, the demon you can believe in. Uh, yeah. Was, <laughs> was I think posted at, uh, uh, on Here TV? They they showed that, right? Yes. Yeah. It was on uh, Here TV. Uh, our contract with them ended, I think, just this last year, but. For like two years, they had a couple of uh, movies that I hosted up on there, and now the only things that are remaining are on my website, StanTheMechanic.com. So it's uh, oh, that's public, public domain. StanTheMechanic.com. Yeah. Because I have to tell you, I so I look on YouTube. I can find like your your ads for it or your promos for it. Listen, that's some fun shit. I'm just gonna say, and uh, you're, I was you never know, but I was very impressed. You're a good actor and everything. Thank you. Yeah, you, it, you know, it's it's silly, and I, I just want it to be, like, Elvira's, like, one of my favorite oh. characters, and Cassandra Peterson's one of my favorite actresses yeah. and comedians of all time, so I borrow heavily from her, and just, yeah. uh, I just wanted it to be a big, fat, gay, hairy version of her, and that's what Stan is, you know? So it's just, uh, it's a lot of fun, and, uh, you know, I had hired two actors to work with me, like, it's all based on kind of a Rocky Horror theme. Where yeah. They they were uh, um, Janet and Brad, and they were my assistants, and you know just a lot of yeah. sex jokes, double entendre, silliness, and exactly. And it's going to continue on. I actually just had a a local um, a seamstress here um, design a new costume for me, which is done and ready. But I'll I'll be premiering that next year. You know, I am so excited for you because that's fun. <laughs> what do you? hope to take not only this but your acting and continue that as well or are you even able to with so much going on yeah stan i kind of did nothing new with stan for this halloween season so yeah uh bear world kind of takes up 100 percent of my time yeah i will try to be better about that and maybe continuously do photo shoots and record throughout the year so maybe next halloween i'll have some content to throw out but it's right it's tough. It's tough. It, yeah. Because, so as we mentioned uh, in your intro, you have a lot of things that you do, uh, a lot of interests. Uh, and I totally get it because I'm the same way and have to find ways to make it in there. How, and you're, you know, you're married. How do you balance everything? Um, you know, since the pandemic, you know, everybody works from home. So Richard does work from home a lot. So, we are working, but at the same time, we're here and we're together. So we'll stop and take a break. So we're, we're able to kind of like put in some of the quality time as a married couple and get our work done at the same time, which is great. Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of being the, you know, the editor of Bear World, I've been taking myself to a lot of different bear runs around the country. And some of them he'll come with me to. And um, so it's great. So I get to travel and kind of do a little bit of vacationing thing, but I'm also working at the same time. So it's like... There's no such thing as a day off. Like the laptop's got to come with me everywhere. Uh, I'm constantly meeting and networking with new, you know, bears that are doing interesting things all around the country, hopefully soon all around the world. So, but I can't complain. It's like, I really hated what I used to do for work. So doing this is definitely um, a blessing. So getting paid to do something that I enjoy, truly, I realize how lucky I am because right. a lot of people cannot say the same thing. So. Right, right. And I mean, and your proof, I think everybody who is in the game doing something that they love, it just takes working your ass off. But, you know, if you put in the work, it doesn't mean it's impossible, but it does, even when you get what you wanted, it takes work. But yeah. when you love it, it doesn't feel as hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. You don't mind it. You don't yeah, mind it as exactly. much. So <laughs> what do you yeah. what would be your uh, do you have any future goals for the magazine that you are able to say this is what I'd like to see grow into? Um, I haven't really done a couple of year plan out. I, I want to do that, but I've been so um, kind of busy just trying to keep the content rolling <laughs> that I I can't sit here and honestly say that I, I've given like a five year thought plan to it i mean what i've instituted is kind of really what i had seen for it to begin with and i'm glad it's taking root and i'm glad the readers are responding to it so for now steady as she blows i want to just keep keep the course and yeah. uh, may, maybe figure it out a bit as i go along <laughs> right well i feel like it, it at least it seems like standing outside here that there was a natural evolution that just happened 
as you took over, you know? And I guess, I mean, if that's working and things just, because you do strike me as someone who has ideas constantly. Yeah, so maybe it is better not to have to stress yourself out because it's going, it's going good. Um, no. So Bear World is, like I said, back, I must have been right when they started then, when you were mentioning it's like 11 years. Um, such a stabilizing force in my life. I was just out of a long relationship. I didn't know what dating was. It had changed a lot since I had been in there. And Bear World was part of my rediscovery of, of who I was. Do you get a lot of feedback from people who've kind of been around to tell you what impact the magazine has made on them? Sometimes, um, not often, because I, I kind of go by the old adage, no news is good news, because uh, when people are unhappy, they will definitely oh, tell yeah. you. Yeah. Um, but occasionally we do, um, when I meet a lot of people that, you know, tell me how it kept them informed and made them feel welcome, especially now that we're, um, you know, going into Asia and kind of acknowledging the yeah. Asian bear scene and that, you know, they really... You know, and, and there's no reason they shouldn't be included, but they're so appreciative to be seen, yeah. you know, and I love that, you know, and I love that, um, you know, younger, queer, fat, hairy boys, you know, boys and, and gals is even female bears now, um, <laughs> you know, have uh, used us as a, a way to kind of discover themselves and discover the bear scene. And it, it's always very rewarding to get those types of messages and stuff. We get that more in person. People don't really write right. in to see that, but like, right. you know, when, when you run into people and they find out what I'm doing, cause I don't, I don't, I, you know, I don't lead with, I am the editor of bear world. Cause <laughs> I feel that's so douchey. Like, right. you know, <laughs> but sometimes like when you talk, you know, what do you do for a living? Whatever comes up. And then the, the reactions sometimes are so like cute and, and yeah. you know, adorable, like to, to see that. And I just know again, coming up, I, I wish there was kind of a resource like that for me, because I, I know you had mentioned you were um, involved in the Chub Chaser scene and then yeah. kind of re relegated to the Bears. You know, yeah. I've also um, kind of been in, in both because, I, you know, I I'm I was a fat, hairy guy, so I was a Chub that was also a Bear. And right. Sometimes chasers don't like the body hair and sometimes they do. And, it, you know, it's like you said, the labels can be very confusing and people can yeah. be, you know, and my weight has gone up and down through the years. Right. Like I had lost all the weight and was kind of waifish looking uh, in the early 2000s. And, and the bears and the chases were like, no, thanks. You know what right. I'm saying? So, but at the same time, you know, I guess the twinks and the muscle guys, I was still too heavy or right. didn't look right so there was no there's never any winning you know what i'm saying so no. it's like uh and that's the good thing about you know the bear community was built kind of to welcome in the the outsiders from mainstream yeah. from the mainstream gay world and we kind of moved away from that like we work with um les k wright as one of our contributors mm -hmm. the bear historian and, um, you know, he talks about the bear wars, w which is like uh, muscle bears versus, uh, I guess, bears that look like me or whatever yeah. that came about, um, you know, I guess back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And, and I even remember my first couple of years in P-Town, <laughs> all the talk of like, you know, it was like muscle bears versus, you know, regular bears. But right. um, I feel like that that divide is slowly but surely healing. Um, I... Uh, <clears throat> You know, I just we went to World Bear Weekend this year, yeah. so there was a lot of female bears in that space and um, non-binary kids and and pets. Um, so it's yeah. really evolving and, and becoming ever more inclusive, which is great. So, which is so fascinating to me because <coughs> you know I think we both uh, I were there for the whole thing. You know what I mean? I remember when it was very, and I can't pinpoint. If I am just more accepting of myself, so I don't notice as much that, uh, you know, that it was ever that way. Because, I mean, you mentioning the Bear Wars, I'm like, oh, yeah, now I, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, I love that y'all are, because we try to be very sex positive on our show. We try to be very body positive. Uh, we, that's the rule when we have interns. Listen, we don't. We don't talk shade about anyone um, because we need to celebrate everyone because we had a problem with that. But I love that you're mentioning like uh, 
female bears, which is something yeah. newer to us over here. And so there is still pushback, but I love it. I love yeah. that we have, you talk about pets, all of it. There is this big, um, and you guys, because I feel like there's a lot of influence when you are the magazine, really, for us, that influence of y'all being very embracing of it, I think says a lot to our community. I hope so. I, you know, um, it, that was very important to Richard, and that's why we named uh, Adam Rodriguez route as the first Bear World Trailblazer, because he oh. started North American Bear Weekend and World Bear Weekend, which is the first big bear run and, and big bear gathering to kind of really make space for females that wanted to be you know yeah. that were part of the community but kind of you know give voice to them in a very public way and yeah there was there was and is pushback but you know um it's growing pains you know because yeah. uh you know it, it we were like i said we were a community built on being outsiders so who are we to now like turn our nose exactly. up at anybody so it's you know, we got to make space for, you know, bears with disabilities. We just did yeah. feature with, with David Sugar, Miss, Mr. Uh, not Mr. World Cub 2023, who's building a platform um, because he, he has autism. So he's trying to make space for neurodivergent people. And I know there's a lot of um, bears out there that are deaf because I've seen it like... Um, like Texas Bear Roundup, they have um, sign language interpreters and stuff. And, you know, those are stories I want to talk about. And I, you know, I definitely want to meet and interact with more trans bears uh, because that's something obviously I can't speak to. And that would right. need to really come from an authentic place. So, yeah, it is amazing to watch how much. I mean, the other thing I always tell people who seem, you know, maybe reluctant is what does it take away from you to celebrate and make a place at the table? for everybody else doesn't take anything. I didn't ask you to, you know, I didn't say I need you to fuck everybody here. That's right. Not, this is about, we are all here and we all should belong here. Yeah. I mean, you know, usually the female bears and, and this is not to generalize, but you know, some of them are like, you know, uh, either lesbians or bisexual, you know, right. uh, c cis women that, you know, also, you know, the lesbian community has their own struggles in terms yeah. of, I guess, you know, body types and how you fit in and, and whatnot. So if, they, if they're if they comfortable around us, what, what's the harm? Like, exactly. you know, like, I, like I said, nobody's forcing you to fuck anybody you don't right? want to. What's the big deal? Like, exactly. You know, I've had many lesbian mentors through the years. Like if we oh, yeah. people would just chill out, sit down and have a conversation, it's, yeah. you know, there's a lot to learn out there, you know. Yeah. I mean, talk about a war, you know, for years, decades ago, it was the gay and lesbian divide. And I it's know. nice that that had, you know, began to heal and we have that. So uh, us here they call, you know, we talk about being a cheerleader and it's to be a cheerleader for all of us. One of the things I always enjoyed about the bear label and why I wear it with pride is it also wasn't... Uh, dependent on an age bracket. You know what I mean? Uh, twinks tend to have to be, you know, in their 20s plus their body type. But it has allowed me, again, a re-emergence of my, uh, of owning myself because it doesn't matter that I turned 48 a month ago. I can still be a sexy bear at 48. And so that's, that's what's important to me to see is that bears can continually embrace and grow you know what i yeah. mean yeah absolutely and i think it's kind of a, you know i'm starting to envision you know bears the bear community is kind of being an umbrella for a lot of different types of subgroups that really now fit in here because like even in my coverage like i feel like you know um leather you know leather and kinksters fall into under the bear scene because so many bears are interested in it exactly. uh the pet and pup communities uh daddies daddies yeah. are just <laughs> exploding like yes. so daddies definitely fall into the wheelhouse you know chubs and chasers um you know so it, it, it's it's exciting it's great it's the world is our oyster and yeah. uh you know i I'm happy to see this movement towards body positivity and, and yes. meeting all these different artists out there, you know, like Joshua Pangborn does a lot of, uh, you know, queer and fat positive work with yeah. sidekick productions and, 
you know, I, just uh, people that are just unapologetic. And just the nicest, most enthusiastic person. He, you know, really is. He, yeah. he really is. I mean, th- that's been... I mean, I knew Joshua before all, yeah. all this, you know, but um, just the people that I've gotten to meet too. Like, I know you're you're very good friends with Tom Goss. Like, I really yeah. got to know him well when his new album came out. Um, what a sweetheart, you know? Oh, and, uh, yes. I, it, that's an understatement. Like, what what a nice guy. And um, uh, it was fun that the journey as the editor of Bear World that led me to uh, the boy slut himself, Zachary Zane, oh, who I know you uh, had on the show. Yes. Um, I he loves bears. He loves yes. he loves big meaty asses, and he loves sex. Loves loves yep. loves sex, and uh, we love him. Yes, the readers we do. love him. <laughs> like, we you know, did a, our very first queer book club show, which is me and three other people who read his book, and uh, and so that by the time this is out, that show would have come out. And I have to tell you. I said it on the show, and Zachary knows. I send him many notes. I'm like, you know, if you're ever in the Northwest, I'm there. I am there for you <laughs> in every way you, you need it to be. But <laughs> it's also a beautiful – this is what I love. So I like to say that the world, the world inside my area of life needs to reflect how it should be outside, which means we love each other, we accept each other, we celebrate each other. And, and I tell everybody, you don't have to understand – someone else's journey to love and celebrate them so if you tell me you have to you have to understand it fuck off that is not how this works and uh so that's what i love actually we met oh my god i can't i don't even know how long ago uh but you and richard was in we're in palm springs yeah and with and it was i had another show at that time and i was down there and your energy is the same today just bright and open and it's because of you uh I'm horrible with accents, and yet I'm always fascinated with them. And because I'm from over here, you have that great, like, New York accent. And so I do a, uh, I do a little thing when I do Instagram Live where I call it Coffee Talk. And that's what inspired. <laughs> that was inspired by you. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> right? And so here we are, you know, 10 years later. And I'm like, yeah, it's always going to be you. And I just did a coffee talk this morning, and I love it with all of my heart. I love it. Right? And I get that, <laughs> that will not sound a thing like what reality uh, accent is, but it's my version. It's my ode, my homage. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, it slips out, and people are just like, say that again? It's like, it's usually coffee, you know, coffee, water, yep. like, you know, stuff like that. I mean, I was exactly. born and raised in Queens, so, you know, the, the New York accent is very strong, you know. <laughs> it must be quite, because uh, Richard's from uh, England, isn't he? Yeah, but he's that, British, so. That's quite a cultural uh, clash. But, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, we. I love very that. different very different but you know that's that's the spice of life so it, it is <laughs> that's exactly right and i love meeting people from all different walks so um i i've watched y'all for years as we move forward so like i was uh mentioning you do a lot of things um i do a lot of things i totally know how that goes what advice would you give someone who wants to do all of the things we want to do how can they make that happen and yet not die in the process? Oof. Oh, man. Um, prioritization, I think, is the key. Uh, decide what you want most. It doesn't mean you, you don't have to do the other things, but, you know, what needs to get done today, focus on that, and then celebrate the victories and wins along the way. Because it, it's so easy to get overwhelmed or come down on yourself for not completing certain tasks like you know like i was bummed out that i didn't get to record anything for stan the mechanic this year because there's right. you know my twitter following is strong with him but you know and i know they're there for the chest hair and, and the ooey gooey berryness and i love them for it and that's great uh but i couldn't give them that much but you know what you know i was um in a way pr- proving my role as editor you know i was really i spent this entire summer and fall um traveling you know um and I'm not complaining. It was great. You know, I you know, I went to Tidal Wave in Las Vegas back in June. I went to World Bear Weekend. I went to uh, Provincetown Bear Week. I just got back from Cannonball down in Florida. Um, you know, and because it was important with me to kind of see the different regional bear groups. And, um, you know, we write about these events all the time, you know, just kind of 
get in there and get a feel for it and see what's going down in these different places. So that's what I spent my time doing. And um, so I didn't have time to record or write anything for Stan. And, you know, um, I didn't, you know, I kind of neglected some of the friendships in my life that matter a lot, but they understand what I'm doing and what I'm right. trying to achieve. And the people that love you and care about you would never, you know, shit on you for like pursuing your dream or trying to do a good job about it. So it's like, you know, so that, that would be my advice is to prioritize, be easy on yourself and celebrate the victories along the way. Exactly. Motivated. <laughs> so are you going to be doing, because I just have to say winter in New York is not my favorite thing. Uh, are you going to be doing any traveling during the winter time? No. Like when I got back from uh, Florida, I was like, kind of thrilled to put my suitcase down and like uh, i'm in new york for the next couple of months and i'm right. happy about it so it's uh yeah all that i have on the calendar is a couple of drag shows in early 2024 because that's another nice. thing that i love that bears don't like to admit we love drag bears right? we love drag like yeah. what's not to um, love <laughs> i know um <laughs> and yeah so nothing on the calendar as of yet but that's that's today you never know in a week or two what's going to come up so exactly and also <laughs> for the bears now we can celebrate there's so many drag queens now that that will sport the facial hair i'm like listen it's for everybody which which yeah. I love. yeah so first of all as we wind down here can you tell people where they can find the magazine uh your your uh insta handle and all of that to celebrate that Yes, uh, so please come check us out at bearworldmag.com. Um, that's our handle on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, and there's a Facebook, Bear World Magazine, um, Facebook page. Uh, for myself, I have my own handle as the editor, which is John underscore BWM. So I try to kind of interact with the readers as much as possible. And right. we're also putting out a call to people like, you know, if there is somebody that you want to see covered or an event that you think is special that we should write about, please email me at editor at bearworldmagazine.com because I'm very open to it. I'm, I'm the only full-time person working on the magazine, so I do need... The readership's help to to yeah. cover as many events and people as possible and uh for stan uh you can find him at standthemechanic.com and at stan the mechanic on instagram and twitter and people do i do have to say people love stan they love him and sometimes in uh naughty naughty ways <laughs> <laughs> It's all welcome. <laughs> right. One of the best things that I think needs to go on a t-shirt is you're talking about all the ooey gooey bear berryness. Uh, yes. I hope we all can be ooey gooey berry. Cause that's yes. <laughs> well, is there anything coming up for, on the magazine that you just want to highlight and tell people to watch for like any stories or anything? Yes, we will. Um, we're gonna actually put up the nominees for the next Bear World Magazine Awards kind of in the early new year, or we're at least going to start reaching out for everybody's feedback because we have to get it all up and ready for July. So we, yeah. we're on a shorter timeline. So that's coming. And um, other than that, you know, we, we're going to continue to feature uh, prominent voices in the community. Keep a lookout for Les K. Wright's uh, Bear History column and J. Tobias Perry and Damon Percy's, um, you know, uh, perspectives from the black bear community. Um, I'm starting to work with someone that lives in Spain. Um, nice. So we're going to get the European perspective. So th there's just a lot, a lot of goodness coming up. And like I said, if we're, if we're missing something or you think we should know about something, let us know. We're open to uh to hearing that <laughs> i love that and if y'all uh send me a message and you have any feedback i will pass it right along to john uh but i i personally uh am so glad you're where you're at the magazine has done a lot for me over the years and we are here to celebrate right along with you because i think it's an it's an amazing thing mm, and then in like so five much. years uh i plan to get an award i'll give myself five <laughs> <laughs> to do that but, John, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight and spending time with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. And thank you for all the great work that you do and, and the Bears of Certain Age podcast as right. well to give voice to Bears of a Certain Age that are also underrepresented. Right. So. Basically, Bears of a Certain Age is just me saying I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired, too. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm tired and my knee hurts and I don't know why. That's, that's my certain age coming up. 
But everybody remember, you can find out anything you want about our show at thequeercentric.com. You can find out more about John because I know you're going to want to. You can come to our Instagram or go to that, uh, go to that website. Uh, but I encourage everyone, if you've not discovered Bear World Magazine, it's worth discovering no matter how you identify, but if you identify as a bear and you need to feel community, and maybe you live in a rural area like a lot of people do out here in the Northwest, I can I encourage you to go check that out. Remember, you can check out our show every Tuesday. A new episode drops at thequeercentric.com. Uh, watch for those sexy, sexy, naughty and nice pictures we're going to be releasing. And listen, we are here to celebrate everyone. So until next time, bye. Hey, Tom. Patreon. How's it going? Patreon. I am doing great. Patreon. Wow. Are you having like a stroke or something? What are you talking about? Patreon. That's just my weird eye. Patreon. Well, no, I'm, I'm used to that, but you're, you're skipping like an old CD. Should I knock you on the side of the head? Oh, okay. Calm down. Patreon. I read this thing on subliminal advertising, and since we are pushing our Patreon, Patreon, I thought I'd try it out. Patreon. Well, very subtle. I'm not sure your version of subliminal advertising is quite the method they had in mind. Patreon. Now you have me doing it. Once you start, it's kind of hard to stop. It's kind of soothing. And if by soothing you mean nails screeching on a chalkboard, then sure. To be very clear, it's annoying. Yeah, I picked that up. Thanks. We could just be straightforward and tell people to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash thequeercentric. But I was hoping to be cool and stealth-like. And you were accomplishing neither of those things. You're always ruining my fun. Fine. We can just tell them that we have different levels of donations and you get cool stuff on each level and even get exclusive things. Oh, that's the attitude. Your enthusiasm will be really contagious. Visit us at patreon.com slash thequeercentric to support us today. I mean, I swear it's fun, and we will forever be grateful. There you go. Patreon. Come on, are you serious? Leave me alone.